Lagrima, we have a piece that has three distinct voices. The treble, the bass, and a middle voice. To get the melody to sing out, you want to give a little bit more energy into the string uh, with that M finger. And, and to do this, you need a good free stroke. And that is accomplished by pushing into the string rather than pulling up. Anytime that you're pulling up, you're using your extensor muscles rather than your flexor muscles. And if you know anything about an alligator, you know, the thing can't open its mouth, but it can, really, it can bite down really hard. So these flexor muscles are, are much stronger than the extensor muscles. It's the same sort of thing. So when you're pushing into the string, you're going to let that little finger collapse, or the, the, the first joint. Next with the bass, make sure that your thumb is leading the phrase. Like that. And a good uh, free stroke with the thumb. Try to keep your hands steady. You don't want to move around. Probably the most important thing is that you need to have a little angle in your wrist so that the, the thumb can freely move, be placed a little bit forward, and the, uh, the fingers have enough room to get underneath the hand by pushing. If your wrist is too flat, you can't get enough energy with the fingers. You're only using part of the fingers, You're using from the, the mid joint to generate that energy. But if you're up a little bit, you get to use from the, the hand knuckle to push a lot more mass there you're going to get a lot more sound. Shifting. So you're going to move a lot in this piece. You're going from the second position all the way up to the ninth position. The trick with shifting is that you want to feel like you're balanced. And I like to think of my hand as sort of a rail car. Indiana Jones, right? Okay. Stay on the rails. You might have to drop your shoulder a little bit to keep that hand position similar to what it is here. But you want to make sure that you're leading it. You practice just shifting, making those shifts so that you don't overshoot it or undershoot it. Let's undershoot it. Or maybe we'll overshoot it. Mmm, it's delightful, isn't it? Your audience will love it too. So practice that. In the B section of this piece, we go into E minor. The first part is an E major. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. That's the scale there. But when we get into the B section, it's in uh, E minor, which is the parallel minor of E major. I wonder if you knew that. <laughs> so anyway, with uh, the, the minor part, there's some interesting parts that happen here, um, more in the, in the middle section that you probably want to create a thread of interest for your listener. So it starts here, and then I like this. That's a nice little part in thirds. Again. Now you don't have to make it stick out crazy, but, but enough so that it's, ooh, there's something happening there. So one final note. Uh, some people may take this the wrong way. Personally, I don't care. I think it's one note. So in uh, this, this part here, the beginning, right here. I change one note. It should be this. I change it from, you know, that F sharp to an E. Because I like it. And I think it follows the imitation of this. And it's similar to this. 
it may be a mistake from the very beginning. I mean, come on, F sharp to E? Could be. You never know. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Take a look at the piece, work it out, let me know what you think.